One thing we can consider when we do hill shading is the idea of sky models. So if we think of this little piece of terrain here that we're going to hill shade, what we basically think is that we have this illumination vector or this um, direction of light coming in and it's shining down on the terrain and that's how we're going to hill shade it. So we can kind of think of that as if this um, little piece of terrain is in the center of a giant hemisphere which would be our sky and then the sun is in the sky and the sun is shining down on the terrain. But because we only use one direction of hill shading it doesn't really look like this. This would be like a bright sky where there's light coming from all around the sky and it's all shining down on the terrain, which would be a very natural look. And then having the sun in the sky would not be a bad thing. But if everything else is black and we only have this one illumination vector, or this one direction of light coming in like we do with hill shading, it doesn't provide for a very good representation of the terrain. Um, another way of thinking about that, we've kind of taken this and now we've kind of rotated it in 3D. Here's our light direction here, and it's only one point on this black hemisphere. So it's kind of like everything is black, and then we're just shining one sort of flashlight down on this terrain. And it looks okay, but we, we can do better. So how do we do better? Well, we use different um, sky models in order to do our hill shading. So this would be the one built into the GIS, the point source light illumination. We just have one direction, maybe it's 45 degrees off the horizon, and maybe it's coming in from the northwest. But we can, um, we can say that light in the sky is more um, spread out like this. We could say we have some light in the sky. It's not a completely black sky. Maybe it's a grayish sky. And then we have light coming from this direction here. Or we could model it as the sky looks on a clear day, which is that about half of the sky is much brighter and the other half of the sky isn't quite as bright. We could also um, do a uniform, the entire sky is super bright. Or we could do this overcast sky model where the, the brightest part of the sky is right directly overhead and then it gets darker and darker as we move down, through this, down, to this, down towards the horizon. We'll look at some examples of point source, clear day, and overcast in the next couple of slides. So how would we do this in GIS? Well, basically we would put it into a little program where we um, know what the sky, what the um, illumination in the sky looks like. There's models that this is based on. And then we would just sample a whole bunch of points. And then we would use each of these point samples to get a direction for our illumination vector. So instead of always using from the northwest and 45 degrees from the horizon, some of these might be coming in more from the north or from the west. And some of these might be lighter or stronger depending on how, how bright that illumination or that lighting is in the sky itself. So in this example here, we're using 250 of these. We take um, all of those hill shadings. We multiply them by some weight, these W1, W2, based on um, how bright the sky is that this particular illumination vector represents. And then we just add all those together and we get a hill shaded map like we see here. So is all of that effort worth it? Well, here's a comparison here. Here's the point source. This would be, um, this would be directly out of the GIS. And it, it makes a fine representation of the terrain here. It kind of has a little bit of a shiny look to it, um, but, but it doesn't look bad. We can clearly see this is a northwest facing, um, facing side of a ridge, and this is, the, uh, this is the eastern facing side of the ridge. But if instead we used a clear day, we're able to kind of, the, our darks don't get as dark, we're able to see a lot more detail, and the whole thing doesn't have that kind of shiny aluminum foil type look. It looks more like it was maybe shaded with a pencil instead. So using a clear day sky model, we're able to um, see some more detail in the terrain, and, and maybe it looks more realistic as, um, as this terrain would actually look on a clear day. This is the Grand Canyon and it compares a point source illumination to an overcast sky. Remember the overcast sky has most of the brightness um, directly overhead and then it gets a little darker as we move down to, to the horizon. What we can see here is that we, yeah, we get a 3D effect here, but here we're able to see the highest ridges as the brightest parts because they're able to see most of the sky and um, it's basically collecting light from all different parts of the sky. But as we move down deeper into the valley, we get into darker, into the canyon, we get into darker and darker areas until we hit the uh, river, the Colorado River, at the bottom of the canyon here. And because if we were um, floating in the river, we would actually see more of the sky, we get more light from the sky than if we were um, just on this side, this bank of the river or this bank of the river, it actually lightens it up and um, shows the river in a lighter color as we would expect.